a lot of the problems that we're facing in the world today are driven by the fact that we have become disconnected from nature. With the biodiversity crisis and the climate crisis, all of the things that we're facing as a species and as a planet, we really urgently need to find new ways to listen to nature and to learn from it. Understanding the communication of other species essentially opens a window into their worlds, into the complexity of what's going on in their lives, and will almost certainly uncover new forms of intelligence that we didn't know existed on the planet. So I'm Jane Lawton. I work with an organization called Earth Species Project. We are basically using AI to try to decode animal communication, or put more simply, to try and understand what animals are saying. Communication is actually pretty simple. I mean, it's the production of a signal of some kind and the receiving of that signal by another being, and then the production of some kind of response as a result of that signal. Most scientists have a fairly narrow definition of language, one which pretty much says that human beings are really the only species on the planet that have language. But I think the thing we're beginning to realize more and more is that many, many species are communicating in many different ways. And we are finding many of the hallmarks of what we once thought were unique to human language in other species. Most people know that dolphins are super intelligent and vocalize a lot and communicate with each other. And basically they can encode the identity of another dolphin in their whistle. Parrots actually get given a unique name at birth. They learn it from their parents. Orangutans can actually speak about an event in the past and something that is not present. Trees communicate through their mycelial networks, basically at frequencies we can't hear, and they communicate much more when they are stressed. So there's this kind of whole world of communication that is happening around us that we're not able to connect with. We are studying communication, but we see communication as a window into the minds, the worlds, the intelligences of other species. What AI is doing now is vastly accelerating the speed at which we can analyze the data that's being gathered on other species. Previously, a human being used to sit and go through those recordings and actually go, oh, there's a sound. Oh, made another sound there. And then they would have to go through again and classify those vocalizations. Today, that can be done very, very quickly by artificial intelligence. And then going further, we at Earth Species Project are building what we're calling essentially the GPT for animal communication. It's a large language model. It's trained on vast amounts of data and can solve detection and classification tasks and across a whole range of species. If you think about the way in which animals move and the situations that they're operating in, it can be really tough to gather information on these species. But when you go further and you think about, okay, what's the most valuable data that you want to gather? It's often when animals are communicating with each other and there's an exchange of information. Often they're doing this in large groups. So they're all talking at the same time. That makes it super hard to identify which individual is speaking and actually parse out each of those individual signals. These are the kinds of challenges that AI is able to solve for relatively easily. And we have tools now that can help with denoising, that can help with source separation. And then there's also some really amazing progress that's been made in the kinds of ways you can gather information from other species. And a lot of that is in really a new generation of animal-born sensors that are capturing not just the sounds that they're making, but also video footage that shows the movements and then accelerometry data. So you're starting to get this really rich picture of what is going on 
when an animal is moving or making a sound. So there's a ton of data there, and it's so complex. We can't do that without harnessing AI. So that's where the power of it comes. We're really committed as an organization to sharing the models that we're developing. So long as we can be sure that there's no potential that they can be used in ways that might be harmful to other species. We have tools that are already being used by scientists in their research that are really speeding up their ability to analyze their data. Understanding animals better can only help us design better conservation interventions. More importantly, I think understanding animals better could lead to some really profound shifts in the way human beings think about ourselves and our relationship to the planet. So we're really wanting to make sure that the outcomes of this work get amplified in ways that actually transform the way humans think. If we want to change people's mindsets, they need to connect emotionally to other species. As we think about the future, I think we're most excited about the kind of transformation that understanding other species might offer for the way human beings engage with nature. We all need to recognize that we have to protect natural systems, we have to protect the species that are part of those natural systems. For me, that starts with respecting the interconnectedness and the individuality of those species and their right to exist. Thinking about, you know, if you could understand another species, are there ways to actually bring their voice or their perspective into decision-making processes? I think these are the kinds of things that we really aspire to see as an outcome of our work. We want understanding communication to lead to better understanding of other species, which can lead to better ways of inhabiting the planet together. So that's really what it's all about.